Now this one is one that I was really excited about getting. Uh, a mate of mine got it before me and he was saying how good it was. He liked his prog rock as well. And so I was really excited about getting it. Um, so went into R Price, Piccadilly in R Price, Piccadilly in Manchester, not to be confused with Piccadilly Records, and got hold of it. Reasonably cheap, nice piece of vinyl, lovely artwork, and thought, yeah, I love some of this, this is gonna be good. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this. Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe from 1989. Now, was I right to be excited about it? Uh, not really, because to be honest with you, it's okay. It's all right, it has its moments, but it's really just all right, you know. Um, as far as Steve Howe goes, his name is mentioned, obviously, because he was part of the recording, but he did all his recording of his guitar parts, I hate that word, but he did his guitar parts somewhere else compared to the rest of the record. So maybe that happens all the time, I don't know, but it just seems a little bit, a little bit strange. And you don't really get to hear him that much, I don't think, on this record. I think it's mainly, this, this, this LP is mainly about Wakeman and Anderson. The other two are neither here nor there. Now who played bass? Well, it wasn't Chris Squire. It was Tony Levin from King Crimson fame. So what's on the record? Well, some good songs, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to say there's no good songs on it, because that would be silly. Um, you've got, it starts off with a thing called Themes, which is a, uh, it's not bad. The aforementioned Steve Howe does feature on this one quite well, quite heavily. Fist of Fire, which is instantly forgettable. Brother of Mine, which is probably the most well-known song on the album. It was a good song, and it was released as a single. Birthright is quite an interesting song. Um, Topic-wise, it's to do with Aborigines and native Australians, I suppose you could say that. The Meeting, that's a nice little piano piece uh, from Anderson and Wakeman. See what I mean? It's, it's very, it's very keyboardy. This record, it's very vocal. This record, very wordy. Which is not a bad thing. Quartet. Now that's like the big epic on here. It's a good song, don't get me wrong, it is good, quartet, but you kind of forget it until you hear it again and then it all brings it back, like I did last night. Now for surprise of the record, it's, got, it's almost like a reggae influence thing called Teak Boy. It's spelled T-E-A-K-B-O-I-S. Teak Boy. Now that is very, very, very memorable song and once heard, that will stay with you for life. And that's what I want from a record. But I prefer it if the whole album is like that. But obviously, that's asking a lot. It's difficult to write that type of song. But they did it here. Then The Order of the Universe, which again is quite memorable. Another long, epic suite featuring lots of keyboards by Rick Wakeman. And then the final thing, Let's Pretend, which is almost like an acoustic piece featuring Steve Howe and obviously Rick Wakeman and John Anderson. As far as Tony Levin goes, he's clearly on it, but you don't really hear him that much. He's not making a point to be part of Yes, because this essentially is a Yes album. I mean, look at the artwork. It's essentially a Yes album. You even got the, uh, the limited edition Roger Dean print inside here which went straight up on my wall, I can tell you that for nothing, and was one of the reasons why I bought the record in the first place. Because I wanted this in my life and on my wall, because it is a cracking piece of artwork. Now it's meant to depict um, the American landscape in a kind of futuristic way, 
the American landscape shown from the point of view of the Americans never going there and the Native Americans having just kept hold of America for themselves. So that's the idea behind that. I also have, uh, it's a gatefold obviously, another, another big seller for me. I do like a gatefold. And we have some cracking artwork in here again, the Red Desert, which are obviously going to appeal to Yes fans. This is essentially, in many ways, a Yes album. Is it a good Yes album? Not really, it's all right. It's not bad, it has some nice moments. As I said, there's about three or four songs on there which stay with you after you've heard it and for years to come. Because as we're talking, it's obviously 2023 now and this came out in 1989. So that's a long time, it's many decades. So have you heard Anderson Bruford Wakeman How? Or did you avoid it because it didn't say the word yes on it? Even though I think the um, the actual lettering is pretty much the same as uh, what the, the way Roger Dean used to write the word yes. So, another connection there. One thing that did disappoint me, I mean, if you haven't heard it, give it a listen and, you know, I think you might appreciate some of it, at least some of it. One thing that did disappoint me reading about this record and this group was the amount of lawsuits going around in the background. It's so disappointing when I read that. It reminds me a little bit of a momentary lapse of reason and the things that went on there in the background when that record was made. Anyway, how did it do in the old charts? Well, I know for a fact that it got to number 14 in Britain and America number 30. So it's not too bad could be a lot worse. Um, the public didn't really embrace it that much. It never really sold more than a million, this, this LP. Never really more than a million. It did well in Europe, as you would expect, but nothing greater than number 14. Well, I mean, the British here knocked it out of the park on this one. UK number 14, that's, that's the best it did anywhere. So, all in all, Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, Howe, not a bad effort, but it does sound a little stodgy in places. You can kind of tell Steve Howe added his parts later, as it were. Um, and it is, it, it does reek a little bit of a once fantastic group getting back together, putting the band back together, the old cliche. It does reek a little bit of that. But I would recommend giving it a listen if you've always avoided it simply because it's not classed as a yes album. Because really, it kind of is. So that's Anderson Bruford, Wakeman Howe from 1989.